the pyramid is itself is like uh, the core of it is limestone and the focal chamber in it was made from a very special stone yellow transparent quartzite and the focal chamber itself uh, weighs around 120 tons made out of a single solid piece of this fine type of stone and also there is a extraordinary uh, uh, tunnel system inside this pyramid including what they call secret sliding doors that when they entered this one it was accessible they found that the in the end of the tunnel there is a chamber but there is no exit but then they found that the exit is actually in the ceiling and then they went through the ceiling to another tunnel to another chamber that also had uh, another uh, sliding door in the ceiling until they reached the focal chamber and they found also that the sliding door of it is made from the same type of stone yellow transparent quartzite a uh, sliding door that weighs uh, over 40 he tons. Said, Just by opening a door, a sound like thunder will be generated from that labyrinth. And then if we understand the, the abilities of sound, then we will know what kind of force helped these sliding doors that weighs 40 tons and more to be able to slide because with vibration, it can easily be moved. So we might not look at the mud brick here as a cheaper material or something or easier way because that that focal chamber is i don't know actually where you can find yellow transparent yellow transparent cortisite with that size size and single solid piece and then you're going to house it and then cover it with mud then you're not really showing that the bigger chamber inside this site is called hawara and it's from the middle kingdom of egypt and as you can see, tomb robbing, major league. But theoretically, there is a labyrinth underneath my feet of 3,000 rooms, supposedly originally lined in granite. But much of it has been quarried during the Roman times for the material itself which was recycled and made into other buildings. So as we go down inside, you can hear the acoustic properties of the fact that this is super tightly fit limestone. And this is the joinery. It's encrusted with salts now, and it's actually oozing out like this, but originally these multi-ton blocks were so tight, like many other places we've seen, that you can't fit a human hair in, but the thing is, I think I'm seeing hand tool marks. So this may not be an example of lost high technology, but if this was done by hand, it's an astonishing uh, damage. So different than at Giza, again, the core of this pyramid is limestone. We can't go farther because it's full of water, literally full of water. But then on the exterior, and for some specific reason, they encased it, or they built the pyramid itself out of mud brick, <clears throat> and then lined the exterior with limestone. So was the mud brick used because it was an insulation? So this canal represents the water table now, and that's why the interior of this pyramid is full of water possibly is the result of the reasonably recently of the dam system that was built to the south. It's really uh, caused a lot of changes in the water table in many parts of Egypt. But also what's intriguing is not only that this is in uh, general terms a mud pyramid, but that the, the core is megalithic 
and the skin would have been this material, the limestone. So different styles were used and of course we've always been taught that human civilizations have risen up and that we are supposedly the greatest example of humanoid life that's ever existed. But there are counter theories actually that some of the structures in Egypt are actually far older than perhaps this one that we've been looking at and that the ones in Giza may in fact be the oldest of the pyramids and that that level of technology is thousands of years older than the Egyptians and because of some kind of cataclysm that knowledge was lost. So the question about this place is I could accept it, why but not in the was it made out of mud and what again, time period? It's possible it was made out of mud because this is the material at hand. You don't have a lot of limestone here like you do on the Giza Plateau because the Giza Plateau is solid limestone so obviously the majority of the stones that make up the Great Pyramid for example came from the Giza Plateau because that's the local material but the core seems to be limestone and we're going to see if we can find the entrance to it and see if that's a stone room or series of chambers. Here at my doom we have this giant uh, gray granite box and it has a tone oh thanks the tone is tone to F and these are limestone boxes, much smaller. Those are human size. This is bigger. And those do not have a tone. But the granite does. So we are at the Pyramid of My Doom. And it's the lower section that has the classic pyramidal shape. And we get to go inside, down this descending passage and see what's at the bottom. So this is about halfway down the shaft. Looking up. And there we are, looking down. So now about three quarters of the way down, here in the pyramid in Nidum. My doom, sorry, and you can't really see it, but uh, this is precision engineering. These are blocks of massive size that fit together, interlock, absolutely beautiful. Now we'll go down into the chamber. So we're at the bottom of the descending passage, and this is the first room that we're in. Tall enough to stand in. Let's see the tightness of the fit of the stonework. And then through these small semi rooms, that's where we came down. We go. chambers in the pyramids tend to be really pristine, really beautiful. This looks like something blew up inside. It's just uh, so heavily damaged. Was it quarried? Or was there literally an explosion?
Well, look. Somebody forgot to lock the door. So let's go in and see what we can discover. Mm. 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 Notice how resonant this is. So here we're at the base of the pyramid. These two strange ancient pillars with no writing on them whatsoever.